Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I am Dr. Abdul Rahman and we are learning ECG. In previous video, we have discussed briefly about these graphs and we have discussed how this ECG is generated with all of these action potentials as a cumulative effect. In this video, we will discuss these graphs separately. So this is again our whiteboard. So when we when we talk about the cardiac tissues, we know that there are five different types of cardiac tissues. SA node, AV node, Purkinje fiber, atrial tissues, and ventricle tissues. So these five types of tissues are there, which generate action potential, and we are going to learn how action potential is generated in each of these tissues. To to study action potential, we can divide on two different bases. We can divide on the basis of resting membrane potential, or we can divide on the basis of action potential generation. So, when we divide these five tissues on the basis of resting membrane potential, they can be static resting membrane potential, or there can be dynamic resting membrane potential cells. Which are having static resting membrane potential are the atria and ventricle. So their resting membrane will be resting membrane potential will be same static at the same baseline, and it will not it will not increase until it will receive some stimulus. In case of dynamic resting membrane potential, we have SA node, AV node, and Purkinje fiber, and their resting membrane is not static. The resting membrane will be like this, sloping, and it can generate impulse on their own without any stimulus. So that's why they are also the pacemaker cells, or they have the ability of automaticity. On the other hand, if we divide them on the basis of action potential generation. So then again, we can divide in two groups. The one in which action potential is generated due to sodium influx, and the second in which action potential is generated due to calcium influx. So in atria, ventricle, and Purkinje fibers, action potential will be generated due to sodium influx. On the other hand, SA node and AV node will generate action potential. With the influx of calcium, so just keep both of these facts in mind. That in which fibers sodium will incoming will cause action potential, and in which one calcium will play the role, and which have static and which have dynamic baseline or dynamic resting membrane potential. I will take resting membrane potential classification to explain these graphs. So first of all, what is resting membrane potential? Resting membrane potential is nothing but the cell membrane potential at the resting state, and we are talking about heart. So cardiomyocytes, their cell membrane and the potential of their cell membrane at the resting state will be resting membrane potential. That is the simplest thing. And in case of our cardiomyocytes, this resting membrane potential is established by potassium. Efflux. We know that there is constant potassium leaking from the cell to interstitial spaces, which is going on in the heart. So this potassium leakage or this potassium efflux will generate the resting membrane potential of the heart. And different tissue, different heart tissues have different resting membrane potential. For example, in case of SA node, it might be minus fifty-five or minus sixty, but in case of Purkinje fibers or ventricles, it might be seventy to ninety, minus seventy to minus ninety. So before further going deep into the resting membrane potential, we will come back here. Let me explain different ion channels which are present in each type of cells, because it will help us understand how this resting membrane potential and automaticity of different cardiac tissues work. So first of all, we have this cell, and this cell is taken from 
एट्रिया और वेंट्रिकल में नॉन कंडक्टिंग टिश्यूज वी हैव थ्री डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ चैनल्स ऑन दिस सेल वन ऑफ दैम इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर पोटाशियम कंडक्शन वन ऑफ दैम इज फॉर सोडियम एंड वन ऑफ दैम इज फॉर कैल्शियम सो फ्रॉम दिस चैनल दिस चैनल इज कॉल्ड इन फ्लो पोटाशियम रेक्टिफायर इट्स नेम इज शोइंग इट इज इन फ्लो बट द मेन इफेक्ट इट इज जनरेटिंग इज द इफ्लक्स ऑफ पोटाशियम फ्रॉम द सेल एंड दिस पोटाशियम इफ्लक्स इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर आवर रेस्टिंग मेमरिन पोटेंशियल इन ऑल द सेल्स वी आई विल रिपीट दिस दिस चैनल इन ऑल द टिश्यूज सो दिस चैनल विच इज कॉजिंग पोटाशियम लीकेज is present in all the tissues as a node av node and all them all of them and other one this green color this channel is called voltage gated sodium channel and its main function is to push sodium inside when there is some certain stimulus because these cells don't have automaticity so they need some stimulus and when they have that stimulus this channel will be activated and the sodium will be moving from extracellular to intracellular environment and third one is called calcium channel and this is l type calcium channel and l type calcium is basically long term calcium mean it will be a slow calcium and it will keep it will be activated for a longer period of time until a certain level of calcium is built up in the cell it will be keep on activating and the function of this cell is to push extracellular calcium inside the cell so we have three types of channels one responsible for potassium efflux and that potassium efflux will be generating our resting membrane potential second one sodium inside the cell and this sodium inside the cell will generate our action potential and then the calcium so now let's see how the action potential will be generated in atria and ventricle by these cells so as i told you when we are at resting potential this is the resting membrane potential and this is generated by the potassium efflux and this is let's say minus 70 so when a certain type of stimulus is received by the cells in the atria or ventricle the sodium channels will be open as i explained earlier so the opening of the sodium channel will cause rapid inflow of sodium and there will be a rapid increase in intracellular sodium making intracellular environment more positive and then it goes up to let's say plus 30 so this upstroke rapid upstroke will be due to sodium influx and then after reaching a certain level of voltage this sodium channel will stop working because there are sufficient sodium inside the cell and its maximum potential of plus 30 is achieved so now sodium channels are closed when it reaches over there but potassium channel is still working and there is still potassium leaking out of the cell so what will happen it again will start coming down but it will not come down because at the same time after this stimulus not only sodium channel was activated but our calcium 
L type channel was also activated. So calcium was also coming in. But because this is a long acting or long term channel, it will keep on pushing calcium inside the cell slowly. So calcium will keep on coming inside the cell slowly. On the other hand, potassium will be still effluxing out of the cell. So because calcium is coming in and potassium is going out, so they counterbalance each other and that's why we get a, a slope called plateau. And the voltage will be static for a while. And after ultimately what will happen, calcium will come in and ultimately there is a certain level of calcium which will be achieved inside the cell. And when that certain, certain level is achieved, calcium channel will also be closed. And then again only potassium channel will keep on working. And what will happen? Potassium will keep on going out of the cell and ultimately it will make the cell again negative. It will throw all the positive potassiums out and ultimately the cell will come again at minus 90 or minus 70 of resting membrane potential. And again it will wait for another stimulus to come to make another action potential. What is the stimulus? This is the stimulus which we will be getting by AV node, SA node or Purkinje fibers which are having the property of automaticity. We will discuss later on. So this was what this is what was happening in atria and ventricle. Let's go to this graph. So at this portion it was resting membrane potential due to potassium efflux. Then here sodium influx, here sodium channel closed, this a small area of plateau, calcium in and potassium out, then calcium channel stopped and then here only potassium is out and again resting membrane potential and this all started due to this stimulus, this is the stimulus. And in case of ventricles, again the stimulus is this Purkinje fiber. It will stimulate Purkinje fiber depolarization. It will stimulate the ventricles. There was a resting membrane potential, sodium influx, plateau due to calcium in and potassium out, potassium out, and then back to resting membrane potential. So this is what this was what happening in atria and ventricle and their depolarization. So now let's move to, to the next cell. Now again we I'm going to make another cell and this time this is a Purkinje fiber. So we have four types of cells in the four types of channels in the Purkinje fiber. Let me make this four. So this this time the potassium. A influx potassium rectifier I made like this to make it simple. So there will be a potassium efflux channels which are basically influx potassium rectifier and uh, similarly as we discussed before there will be an L type calcium channels which will be putting calcium in and there will be a sodium channel voltage gated fast sodium channel will be which will be putting sodium inside the cell but we have one extra channel and this is called funny current channel 
and this is this funny current is the funny current of sodium it will put sodium inside the cell and this channel is represented by if i is for current and f is for funny so this is a funny current of sodium channel so this is what happening in purkinje fiber when the purkinje fiber is at the resting state potassium is going out of the cell and funny current sodium is coming inside the cell and funny current of sodium is relatively more than the potassium which is going out of the cell so what happens in that we had a baseline of resting membrane potential let's say minus 90 in other tissue when only potassium was acting but here potassium is going out but sodium is coming in so instead of this we are having a slopey appearance so this we 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 don't have a straight line we have a slope this slope is due to potassium efflux and sodium influx and then the slope continues 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 until it reaches a threshold level and that threshold level when it reaches that threshold level for example let's say the threshold level was minus 60 so when that threshold level was achieved threshold level of minus 60 is achieved this sodium channel is activated it will activate the sodium channel sodium channel will open and there will be a fast influx of sodium as happened before in this the opening of sodium channel was coupled with some stimulus but here we don't need any stimulus we just wait to build the potential as high as the threshold potential and threshold potential of this sodium channel fast sodium channel is achieved that this channel will open it will cause sodium influx that will be very fast and there will be depolarization and then ultimately again what will happen sodium will cause intracellular environment hole positive and it can go maybe to positive 30 and then the sodium channel will be stopped because it has achieved its maximum potential and at this time only two channels are working one is the potassium which is going out of the cell and one is calcium which was also activated due to the threshold which is coming inside the cell so again there will be a plateau phase where calcium will be coming in and potassium will be going out and then again as happened before when a certain level of calcium is achieved inside the cell the calcium channel will also be stopped and only potassium channel will be working and it will again take the voltage back to minus 90 which was the resting membrane potential i want to mention one more thing the funny currents of sodium that don't work all the time that will work only at resting membrane potential so when the current will come back to the resting membrane potential of minus 90 or minus 70 or whatever is the resting membrane potential funny current will work and as soon as the threshold potential will be achieved the funny current will be stopped and the sodium influx will start and rest of the cycle and then again when it achieves our resting membrane potential funny current will will again come in and it will again help him attaining the threshold potential and when threshold potential is achieved and again cycle is restored so in this way the purkinje fiber have the automaticity 
they can automatically generate impulses even if there is no stimulus for them. And now let's go back to our graph and see what was here. This was the Purkinje fiber graph. This was the Purkinje fiber graph. And here what we can see, this line is not straight. It is a little bit sloppy as compared to this one. So I will make it more sloppy to, to make it clear. So it was going up. It achieved a certain threshold potential. Sodium channels open, fast sodium influx, calcium coming in, potassium going out, calcium will filled up in the cell, no more calcium will coming in here, calcium channel closed, only potassium going out, going back again to the resting membrane potential of minus 90 and then again there is a slopey appearance because potassium is going out and sodium is coming in due to funny currents. This funny currents will help him achieve the threshold potential. I think that will be clear. Now we have the last one, SA node and AV nodes. What happens in them? First of all, let me draw one cell representing SA node and AV node. This cell will also be having the same thing. It will be having funny current it will be having this is potassium efflux this is sodium influx by the funny current and plus it will be having two types of channels but this time they are both calcium channels they have L-type calcium channel and they have T-type calcium channel. And now I want you to take you back to the classification here. When we learn about action potential generation, so first three atria, ventricle and Purkinje fibers, their action potential was generated by the help of sodium. Now in these one, the only difference is that action potential will be generated with the help of calcium. So coming back to here, so that's why it is not having any fast sodium channel. So what happens in this SA node and AV node? At the resting membrane, at, at the resting state, potassium is going out and sodium is coming in. Because the funny current, because of this funny current, again its slope will not be straight rather it will be up sloping not too much but it will be up sloping so what is happening here sodium is coming in and potassium is going out and again what was happening in Purkinje fiber it will achieve a certain threshold potential this was resting membrane potential so it will achieve a certain threshold potential when it will achieve a third certain threshold potential so so uh, sorry let me explain it again actually it was i need to mention about the resting so resting membrane potential for sa node and av node is almost 60 minus 60 millivolts so at minus 60 millivolts what was happening potassium was going out and sodium was coming in and that's why the slope was a little bit slope there is a slope it is not straight so then when it reaches to almost minus 50 milli equivalent milli volts then what happens our t-type calcium channels will be activated and this t-type calcium channel is called transient calcium channels t4 transient so it will be activated and it will help him and a, a further upstroke a little bit to achieve minus 40 millivolts which is the threshold potential and when this threshold potential for L-type calcium channel is achieved 
there will be a rapid influx of calcium and it will go up to its maximum potential of plus 10 milli equivalent and then when it achieves its maximum potential this rapid calcium influx will stop and then at the moment only one thing is working that is potassium efflux and then potassium will keep on going out until it will achieve its old potential resting memory potential of minus 60. So again as happened in the Purkinje fiber here as well when this a this cell when this SA node or AV nodal cell achieve the threshold potential our funny currents will stop and our transient calcium channels will also stop then only L type calcium channel will be working and when L type calcium channel will be achieving its potential again they will be stopped but it is the potassium channel and potassium efflux which will continue till the end and it will bring it back again to its baseline and again the cycle will start and again it will achieve the threshold potential and it will carry on like this. So this is what is happening in SA node and AV node. Again because of its sloppy resting membrane potential it don't need any stimulus to start and that's why it is having pacemaker potential and that's why they are having the ability of automaticity which is not present in atrial and ventricular cells. So that's it for this video. I hope you understand uh, you understood these graphs and I hope you understood the movement of ions. So that's it for this. Let's move to the next video. Thank you.